Hey, what's everybody? Welcome to the video. Um, you're probably going to watch this either before or after the Sergeant Slaughter one, but welcome to my G.I. Joe classified review of Bazooka. Uh, in America, he's Target exclusive, but I think you can get him regularly overseas. Uh, I happen to get one from a friend who was overseas the same time that it is releasing here in the States. So it's all the same thing. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about Bazooka. He uses some new body parts. Um, but most of all, I just love that the Joe stuff is unique in its own way as they have to find ways to make them look like their characters while using either the same or unique mold parts. With Bazooka, it is a guy in what used to be a Patriots jersey <laughs> and, and tiger stripe pants and boots. So it with a uh, basically a, um, a lifting belt. So it's pretty cool to see that, especially with the hairstyle and what he does. But it's, it's just really cool to see these kind of characters. Bazooka is one of my favorites because Bazooka doesn't get enough love. Bazooka is a very simple man. Either I destroy things with a bazooka or I protect things with a tank. That's his his main thing is 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 uh, anti tank, which is the, why they call him bazooka. But it's also crazy because on the other end, he's also a tank pilot and driver and assistant and knows how the in and outs of a tank. So he knows all the weak points of a tank while also knowing how to defend a tank. That's smart for a guy who a lot of times portrayed as not being smart, which is pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I gotta, I'm gotta. i a big thing for Bazooka. And also, I think about Bazooka fighting giant robots with a Bazooka. Especially when uh, they still had the Transformers license. And so I always think about that. So I'm, I'm definitely going to do at least two photos of him shooting Bazookas <laughs> at some sort of Transformer. So don't judge me. Um, but yeah, enough about me talking. Let's get into it. Articulation-wise, unlike Slaughter and Older Joes, he uses that new neck articulation up top. And I talked about it in the Slaughter review, and I want to talk about it here, is that while I like these joints, I feel like on the inside, there isn't enough movement to allow that articulation, or it isn't soft enough in there to allow the heads to dip down and get a lot more movement. So I usually, and personally what I do is I dremel, because I would like them to have better range and movement. As you can see, it's a little bit more on the stiff side with the new joint, but I'm going to obviously loosen that up by dremeling. As far as articulation goes, we can hit a T-pose with no problem. We have a bicep swivel. Over here, mine has a small QC issue. I, I use some key keys for now, but uh, it doesn't actually stay on all the time. But with some key keys, it actually has some help. And as you can see, I'm, I'm hitting all the spots now. We are pinless, which gives it that nice seamless look. I have a double joint here, and we have a flex. We have that new ball joint here. And I'm glad they went with this one so that it doesn't break up the 14 all too much. We have that beautiful lower joint as well, which will allow for beautiful ab crunch. His is a little bit thicker, which will not allow that full ab dip, not without some heating up. So I'm going to do that later. And if you wanted to drop the belt down lower, you can so you can get that articulation. So you actually have some nice movement. We still have our nice drop down. We have our thigh movement even for the guy with the big legs. And because he uses the bigger legs, you can actually use the parts from uh, Roadblock or or somebody else if you wanted to add like sidearms to him. We have a boot swivel as well. These are technically new boots, if I remember correctly. Uh, but we have our tiger stripe pants, which, uh, like I said, it just looks funny to me. But as far as articulation goes, he actually has a nice bit of range, much like all the other Joes. It's just that neck articulation is a little bit more hindered because of that inner plastic, which is why I'm definitely going to... And this looks crazy, so don't worry about this. But I'm just kind of showing off that range of movement. And as you can see, we can hunch down. But now, like, oh, actually, this stops me for a second to talk about articulation. So if you see a pose like this and you are wondering to yourself how you can make this better, here is a quick lesson. Anatomy-wise, if you think about running or things like that, when you are running... Think about how you move. Your arms aren't technically this way, at least most of the time in motion. So what you would actually do is you would actually rotate this this way, right? This is why you always have to kind of pay attention and do the anatomy yourself, right? And I talked about that arm, that kiki's, because of my QC issue. But see, it pops off. And uh, I'm trying to keep that in place, but uh, it's a little rough right now. <laughs> So if you are running, what you want to do is you want to make sure it seems a bit more on the natural side. Foot out, placement in the air. That's what you kind of want. 
as I sit here and break toys on camera for you. <laughs> and it doesn't look good, but this is how you naturally run. This is why it seems more natural, because this is the way natural body movement looks. But I know for camera sake, you want it to look crazy and dynamic. Now, let's say you want it to look dynamic. You plant the feet a little bit more awkward. You're running a little bit to the side. You place that a little bit higher because you're trying to get away from something. Let's say there's an explosion behind them. This looks a bit more natural for you. And I chose bazooka because you can do this with big guys. You can do this with small guys. Let's say you were hopping over something. Like if you were vaulting. Leg up. Crouch in. Head tuck. See? Now we have a vault pose. Or even a slide. So there's a bunch of different things. And I hope this little lesson helps you. Uh, so keep that in mind. But with all that being said, let's jump into those accessories. No need to take a break because he actually doesn't come with a lot. Uh, Bazooka is very to the point. Uh, so let's talk about that. <laughs> let's actually fix that anatomy. I don't want to be the guy telling you about anatomy and then not fixing it myself. Right. There we go. Oh, I got a stiff foot. There we go. Got to keep that in mind for later. I might have to loosen that up. So we have his said bazooka. Hence the nickname. And the thing about bazooka is, I believe, you know, he sticks with this because that, that's his specialty, right? He can use heat seeking missiles. He can use laser guided RPGs, but he sticks to the simple things because he's a simple guy, right? We have our, I believe this is our front handle. I don't actually know. RPGs, rocket propelled grenades, or rocket units. But I believe this is our trigger. This is our handle. You actually rotate this around because you're going to put rockets in. So then we oh, let me make sure the focus is there. Sorry about that, guys. So we have a, our trigger, our secondary handle. We have what's supposed to be like rope to, to you know hold it over the shoulder. This opens up in case you want to actually put a rocket in, and that talks about our backpack where he holds rockets. These are actually removable to remove from the backpack. Let's actually try to slide one in and it actually does fit inside. Just in case you're wondering, it does fit inside. So you can actually do a shot with him putting one inside and then closing it up. And uh, you can do one out the front to make it look like it's being propelled out. I'm actually gonna see, I don't have one around me now, but I'm going to double check and see how Mezco rockets look in there so you can get a nice photo of that. Then on the backhand side, we have our port for the backpack. What's really cool is that if you want to hang it from the handle on the back, you actually can. Right on the backhand side for a bazooka for storage. So you don't have to always carry it in hand. There you have that. Last but not least, you have his beautiful helmet. <laughs> and the reason why I say beautiful because it's red, one of my favorite colors. And that's why he's well known. This is not his original color scheme. But this is actually his V2 or V3 costume. So I hopefully they'll do the original red color. Or is it orange-like, if I remember correctly? Orange slash reddish, depending on it. But yeah, man, look. I love this look on Bazooka. It's very simple, very to the point, very fun, very Tiger Force. And I know a lot of people hated Tiger Force, but I loved it. Uh, I ate those colorways up. <laughs> that and the Python Patrol. But yeah. Very simple guy with a very simple means. And I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying this kind of stuff because there's other people a little bit more complicated that like Dr. Mind Bender, which I missed out on and I got to find a way to get one. Just reminded myself. And then there's people like Bazooka. Simple people, man, with simple plans. With that being said, though, let's jump into the size comparison. I'll see you guys in a second. All right, now, now we're going to jump into those size comparisons. Going to compare to fellow Tiger Force that also released. Here we are with Duke. Do 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 Tiger Force Duke. Do, 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 Tiger Force Duke. So as you can see, a little bit smaller. As you can see, this is the wide, big, hulking dude. Duke's obviously smaller. We can also compare to Stalker, which you saw previously in uh, the Sergeant Slaughter review. As you can see, he is definitely on a bigger styled body. Even if we take these guys away, we can compare to the bigger roadblock. See how it lines out. I'm actually very, I'm very worried that we won't get a Tiger Force roadblock but I, i'm actually kind of looking forward to that but i'm hoping we kind of get him with a vehicle that'll be nice but as you can see bazooka is actually slightly smaller than that of roadblock i'm really hoping that we get roadblock with like an awe striker even if it's like the off-colored tiger force one i want an awe striker so bad um here we are with destro 
our main man cat version. <laughs> Here we are with a smaller female character, Zorana. Which I'm actually going to do her video too as well. Right? Then if you wanted to compare to like a Python patrol. Bat, here we are. And you can see Bazooka's a big dude, man. He's a big dude. If you want to compare to... Oh, do I have one out? Oh, I don't have one out yet, but I'll, I'll add it in as a bonus. Because I want to do a Valiverse. Here we are with a Mythic Legion. And you can see Bazooka is slightly smaller than that of a Mythic Legion. Here we are with a Marvel Legends Black Panther. So these guys actually work out in a really nice scale of being different sizes. They're not all the same. I am always here for that. Uh, ooh. So I'm going to grab a SHF. I'm going to grab a Valiverse. We can compare those two as well. Here we are with a Mezco Black Skull using a Gomez body. Let's actually get you standing upright. There we go. Then we have a Valiverse Scarab. I feel like these would be a very nice contender to go up against Bazooka as they're slightly bigger. Like I said, the Valiverse stuff is a very nice size. I like it. I like it a lot. Last but not least, here we are with an SHF. It's not Cougar today. It's actually Kamen Rider Revice, who's been sitting on my desk for a while. I really love the Thunder Gale color scheme. And as you can see, he's significantly smaller, but still equally pretty nice. So, with all of that being said, we have our size comparisons out the way. We got our bazooka guys. We don't got our bazooka guys. We're having a good time. Uh, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I'm inching ever closely the time of this video being said. Very close to 90k. Um, and we got it after the new year. I wanted it before, but that's okay because you guys have been consistently like spreading the word. And more importantly, more people are realizing they weren't subbed to me, but have been watching me for years. So I guess maybe I did have to remind you guys and I'm sorry, but, um, uh, it's nice to start to reach a goal and feel it, you know? So I want to say thank you as always. I do appreciate you guys. Um, it really does mean a lot. So thank you. Uh, spread the love, spread the cheer, and as always, please, be good, do good. Drink your water, guys. Later.